Yep, I got a big wired mess here. But you know what? It works. Alright. 18650s. I've got 4S. 10 feet. That's what I got. 4S is 16.8 volts at max charge. I'm only charging them to 16.5. Draining them down to, well, whatever they drain to, or the BMS. Yes. BMS on each pack. Cut them off. Um, I'm actually using the packs to assist on the sealed lead acid batteries that I have here and here and also lined up back in here. I've got about 60 amp worth of solar and also an additional 10 amp, well actually about 8, um, to charge the 18650s. Um, that was the tricky part. Getting them charged. Uh, using them? Well, that was easy. Voltage regulator? It's hot. So, yeah. I mounted a uh, pretty good size heat sink on the top. Um, charging? Now, that was tricky. I had two fail attempts on two different devices. And finally, found success. This is a boost converter, um, but the trick with that is I had to actually buck the solar voltage. This thing is like a tank. It will stay in passive mode up till the voltage goes to a certain point. I've actually got it set at 14.4 or about that, and then it goes into buck. Holding that voltage there, and in the meantime, this thing is stepping up the voltage to uh, 16.4. Um, there are some solar charge controllers out there, but, uh, well, eh, I think I would rather go with this. It seems to be a bit more effective. Maybe not as efficient, but more effective than a solar charge controller for this type of battery. Um, your solar charge controller is going to take whatever power and voltage that it gets on the input and put it to out on whatever it can get. So if you're getting 14 volts, then that's what you're going to get. So if it's a cloudy day and you can only reach 14.4 volts or 14 volts or 12 volts on solar, that's what you're going to get. Um... So that's why I went with the step up. Now, the way it works, solar comes in, if the voltage is low, this thing will stay in passive mode, voltage will pass through it. Yes, it does get hot, that's why I put the heat sink on it. Matter of fact, this thing can get so hot that I can only touch it during peak. And I just seen, I think yesterday I got around 7 amp on output for the battery packs. But by the time he had 7 amp, the packs was almost already charged. Uh, this was just added yesterday, or last night, I got it built. So I did the complete test with this pack and this pack. This pack has a mix of notebook cell batteries that are new. Uh, not recovered, new. Bought them from Amazon. And a mix of EBL battery cells. Um, I've had pretty good luck with EBL battery brand in the past with the nickel metal hydride. So I thought, eh, what the heck. Found the 16 pack on eBay for $16.60 for uh, 10 cells. I thought, hmm, $1.66 a cell. Okay, I'll buy that. They're supposed to be rated 3,000 milliamp hour. They're not. Guarantee it. I uh, did a full test on them at uh, 0.6 amp or 600 milliamp drain and ended up getting like 22. 21 to 22. Pretty constant. Um, I guess that can be expected. They've got it rated at flashlight and there's your 
single LED flashlight with 3.7 volts is not going to run a half of an amp. It's more like going to be 250 milliamp. So if you're draining them at a lower rate, then yes, you're going to get more capacity. That's a no-brainer. Um, after doing a test on the EBL cells, I figured, well, I might as well go with it. They actually handle one amp drain like a champ. So what I've done for my own safety is rate one 4S at one amp and stack the parallel at 10. So one amp times 10, 10 amp. Um, so I could probably do 20 per pack, but I would prefer to do 10. These cells seem to work pretty well at low and slow. They're the king. The great thing about them, I can take one of these packs that's rated right around 20 amp hour. That's usable capacity. You take a sealed lead acid battery that's 20 amp hour, you can only use 10. Because of the way they're, they're designed. So one of these replaces Almost 235 amp hours. Almost. It. Anyway. <clears throat> I like them. Yep. Yeah. Good day to you. Now. Some of you might be asking, why go with the 18650s at the 4S? Well, it was a challenge. A lot of people seem to be giving in to the 24 volt factor. Um, I just couldn't accept that. Between my inverter and a backup charger, I've got $750 tied up in it. And I don't honestly have that much money to throw around. Um, so changing over to a 24 volt inverter was not an option. And I do like a challenge, so, um, uh, I went after it. Now, I did a lot of thinking and a lot of YouTube watching. I'm sure like a lot of other people do. Uh, 3S factor with the 18650s goes to 12.6 volt and drops down to like Nine. Um, let's see exactly what it drops down to if you go it's 2.8 volts times three cells equals 8.4 volts. Alright, my inverter starts being a crybaby at 11.1 .1 volts. I can't do that. I, you know, 3S, I'm already done. Now, my dad could do it. His inverter will drop all the way down to 9.6 and start complaining. Um, he got a little generic. Uh, cheapy. But, it works for him. He's doing alright with it. But mine? No. 11.1 .1 volts, it starts being a crybaby. And honestly, I'm glad. Because I don't want an inverter that's going to drop way down below what's recommended for sealed lead acid batteries and end up having to buy a new set of batteries six months later or even a year later because they got drained down too far. Um, I'm not that big in solar, uh, but my home is like 90% pure solar. I've got 3,000 watts to run on. Um, only the big stuff runs on the electric company like my furnace or uh, 10,000 BTU window unit. Um, I do have a 5,000 BTU window unit that does run on solar, but I typically only run it on uh, bright and sunny days and when the batteries are close to fully charged. Or when it's really hot. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get a little extra light in here. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a little better. Not a lot. But, uh, clean in some. Okay. Where was I? Some of you may be asking, why did I go with 4S? And, well, like I said, it, it, it was a challenge. Uh, the biggest challenge I already knew because of uh, butt converters uh, was going to be the charging. Two attempt fails on charging. One, I tried to use a step down. Um, and as I was saying earlier, step downs have one, had their main fault. When the voltage is low, they're either passive or they don't do nothing. And when the voltage is high, you're good. And that would be... Being passive would be a solar charge controller. Now, I couldn't accept that. So, my next step was a buck boost. Um, I think it worked a whole 30 seconds. But uh, it just, it was only rated at uh, 8 amp. And a lot of restrictions. And I even added uh, extra heat sink to it. But uh, it failed. The uh, fuse holder burned clean out of it. And then this next one is rated at 15 amp step up. Step up only. Um, I knew I was going to have to do something with it. Because when the voltage goes high. And I've got the charge set at 16.4. It won't buck. So it's done. Now. The workaround for that. Was my buck converter. Step the voltage down. To uh, at max sunlight. To like 14 volts. And then let it go into the step up. To step it up to 16.4. And it seems to be working. I've used that setup for about, uh, I think, four days now. And it's holding up. Uh, to step up, I think I did manage to use it a whole... The first board I got, I managed to use it. Maybe an hour? And it didn't work too good. It was on a cloudy day too. So that didn't help any. Um, ordered a second one. And it failed in 30 seconds. I wanted a second one to increase the uh, amperage going into the batteries, battery packs to charge them. No. It wasn't having it. I even put a diode on the output to keep it from back feeding power into it from the other board. Uh... That made it even worse, let me tell you. Um, with this step up, it's made by Drock. It's the uh, step up numerical control uh, 12 amp rated. And it's doing just fine. But if you go with solar, you're going to have to buck to keep that voltage regulated and then boost. If you want to go that route. There are solar charge controllers out there that can um, regulate the voltage down that are compatible with lithium. You have to program them. They're not just automatically compatible with lithium. If they're programmable, you can use them. But they're stupid expensive. Um, for what I've got right now, I think I paid 30 bucks for the drop numerical control 12 amp. And and it's actually charging those three battery packs just fine. I started out at 3.5 volts this morning, well 3.4. Um been a few hours now. They're up to like 3.8. Not too far off from full. So or was I? Yes. The charge controllers. Hmm. I do believe my brain went blank. Yep. Hate when that happens. But it does.
So, you know, I've, I've seen people on YouTube ask about uh, 4S and how can you, how can you use it? Uh, it can be used, but you'll have to tinker. It's going to take a buck inverter that can handle the amperage. Uh, Amazon does have some. Um, they've got some that's 50 amp rated, but the output voltage is only 12.5. And I think the overall output voltage was 11.6 to 12.5, and the input could be as low as 16 volts. And it's the only one of its class with that type of high output that I've found so far. Um, my theory is if I can get these buck converters to work when they're paired up, then I'm just going to go with that. They're rated uh, absolute max with uh, good thermal dissipation at uh, 12 amp, and that's that's pushing it higher than what I'm willing to rate my battery packs at. So um, it's it's all on you. I mean, if you go to get the uh, Samsung and etc. high brand high amp output cells, yeah, you're gonna have to do something different, without a doubt, because um, the 4S 10 p a lot of those high-end cells are rated anywhere from 10 to 20 amp a piece. So you've got one 4S rated at 10 amp. Or you've got one 4S rated at 20 amp. Now take those and multiply it by 10, like a pack that I've got built. And you've got a whopping, massive, just huge amperage output on that one pack. Um, I wasn't looking for that. I do have SLA batteries and they're only about a year old. So, that's a lot of money. Uh, my SLA batteries, I've got an amp hour rating of 800 total. But I did drop 105 amp hour off. It was 335 amp hour batteries I took off. And I'm using the uh, 18650s to replace them. That was easy. And actually everything's working out better. The output voltage on the 18650s I've got set at 12.7 volts. So, as the SLA batteries fall, when they dip down, the 18650s step up and say, hey, I don't think so. So, that's where it starts coming into the amp hour rating. Um, I've got them set, all three packs, last night, for the first run on all three packs, I had set, um, like, at, in the evening when the sun was gone, I was getting no solar charge in. I set the output to like 3 amp. So that will eventually climb as the voltage falls on the sealed lead acid. Uh, no big deal. Everything worked out alright. I ended up using 55 amp hour out of those 18650s and had a voltage of 3.4 this morning when I got up at 7 o'clock. Um, so that's roughly about what? 8. Well, almost 12 hours, no sun, just 50 amp hour, and the sealed lead acid batteries was actually pretty happy. It was a 12 one. That's good. That's a long, long life run there. When you don't drop below 12 volt, your batteries are going to last a lot longer on the SLA. Uh, hope I answered you guys' questions. Um, I know this video is kind of split up, but, you know, I'm editing with Linux on a free program. I'm going to take this video and merge it in with the other one, 